for our next Women's History Month Spotlight, we're bringing on Charleston's own Debbie Antonelli. Antonelli has been a sports broadcaster for over three decades, calling women's and men's basketball on many of the major networks. She was inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame in 2022, and she is joining us today to talk about the journey she's had. Debbie, welcome. Hey, Emily. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad that you're here. I Last time I saw you, we were at your house. Um, we were, <laughs> we, I was watching you do the impossible, so many free throws. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, you do that for such a good cause every Thank year. Um, let's talk about your whole journey. Let's go back to the beginning. Um, you were an athlete first and then you got into TV. Let's talk about that journey. Yeah, I, I played basketball at NC State and uh, I thought maybe after grad school coaching would be an option for me or being an athletic director. That was my mm. path. And then I had an opportunity to call a game uh, when I was 23 years old. At the time in women's college basketball, there's only one game on television. That was the CBS National Championship game. Wow. So I never thought about that as a career for me. I thought coaching or being an AD. But then the first time I did a game, I thought this is just like coaching. It's everything that you do to prepare for a game minus dealing with the players. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that was something that was unique and different. And once I started calling more games, I really found that to be a, an option for a career path. Mm -hmm. And you really advocated to get more women's games on the air. I did. I actually produced and created a network before we even had a uh, network. ESPN was still very young, uh, maybe just over 10 years old. But uh, I was the director of marketing in two major institutions, University of Kentucky and at Ohio State. And when I was at both places, I started calling games and we created a network at Kentucky and then we created one at Ohio State. And um, I actually went to a local cable company and said, can you produce sports? And would you be willing to try to produce some women's mm -hmm. games? How much would it cost? And then as the director of marketing, I went out and sold it and it allowed me to stay on the air as the analyst. Wow, so you've been doing this for 36 years? 36, yes, it's wow. great. I hope you get 36. I <laughs> hope so, that's the goal. What are some of the changes you've seen during that whole span? Oh my goodness, opportunities. I mean, I'm sitting here with you and, and you're probably way less than half my age mm -hmm. and you're getting a, a, an opportunity to have a brilliant career in this mm -hmm. business that we love. Uh, I love the game, first and foremost. I love being in the gym. I love the prep, I love all the things that come with it, and I hope that my hard work has been an example for others that are coming on. There are a lot more opportunities now than there's ever been. It's so competitive to get these jobs now mm -hmm. in college basketball or around sports, and I see so many more young women that are entering into the field, and it's great that they have a chance to they have a fighting chance to, to have an opportunity. Definitely. What does your life look like right now? I'm sure this is your busiest season. Where can we find you? Where are you? Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, I, I uh, average about 75 to 80 college wow. men's and women's games, and the best part of the season is coming up. So I'm waiting right now for my assignment from CBS on the NCAA men's tournament first and second round. So uh, I will know after Selection Sunday where I'm going, and I'll go first and second round. That'll be eight teams that I'll have to cover. Hopefully I've already covered some of them, so I have a little bit of a head start on my prep. And then after the first and second round of the men's tournament, then I'll go to the regionals of the uh, women's tournament for ESPN and uh, work those all the way through to Westwood One for the Final Four, which I've been calling uh, radio and Westwood One since 1996. Wow. Wow. And, you know, it's not just work for you. It's also a good cause. So you're using your yes. platform for good. Let's talk about that. Yes, thank you for asking because this is really important to me and families like mine. I have three boys. My middle son has Down syndrome. He's a graduate of the Clemson Life Program. Life is an acronym. Learning is for everyone. And if anybody's followed our story, they know that Special Olympics has been a huge part of helping my son find confidence and the tools and the resources that he may need to be able to navigate living an independent life. And he is living independently right now. But what I've done is I've created this crazy idea to, <laughs> to do a free throw shooting marathon in my driveway. I make 100 free throws <laughs> on the top of every hour wow. for 24 straight hours. So at the end of 24 hours, I've made 2,400 free throws and we've done it for five years. And in the five years, we've raised $856,000 wow. for Special Olympics. My son, Frankie, has been my inspiration. Um, last year, I shot 95%. The fitness and the training that comes with it is using the vehicle of free throws to create awareness yeah. and raise money. But I'm, I'm telling you, Emily, this year, I, I'm, 
I, it's going to be a very emotional year because I, I know we're going to cross a million dollars. And when I started doing this, it wasn't, I had no idea. I didn't even know if I could do it physically. Yeah. But the training that comes with it is significant. And I work really hard so that I can shoot the free throws at a high level so that more people will pay attention. You don't want to tune in on the live stream and see some lady shooting a bunch of bricks. <laughs> you, know, you just don't want to do that. But yeah. I do get AARP mail. So, <laughs> you um, would never know, by the way. Your uh, accuracy, can you talk about that? It is insane. Well, that's the part that <laughs> is humbling about the whole thing. But if people knew behind the scenes how hard I trained and where the physical, mo emotional, and mental part of it comes from is truly about the athletes. And mm -hmm. I have, um, in five years, I am averaging 94%. It is a ridiculous number. <laughs> I hope I can keep it up. Last year, I shot 95% and I had a broken finger on my left <gasps> hand. Uh, but, you know, as a shooter, muscle memory and the ability to self correct, and then having the right amount of fitness to go along with it. And uh, I'm emotional now. I know I'm going to be emotional on that day because I know what the money does and mm -hmm. how it helps families like mine and all the athletes in South Carolina. There's 30,000 athletes wow. that benefit from this fundraiser, a million dollars. I know we, and we need help and, and, and people can help us. Yeah. There's lots of ways you can get involved and help. Yeah, so May 18th and 19th, how can people help now? Uh, you can go to 24hoursnbn.com. Okay. It's 24hoursnbn.com. Uh, our event is called Nothing But Net, 24 Hours of Nothing But Net. And if every person just gave one penny, if, just, if you just gave one penny, it's $24 for Special Olympics and it has a major impact on the athletes. Definitely, definitely. It's, it's such an amazing event to be at, by the way. Thank um, you, lastly, thanks for coming. Of course, <laughs> lastly, what's the, if you were talking to another sports, aspiring sportscaster, what would you tell them um, right now about what they can accomplish? Well, first of all, your hard work has to supersede everything else. That's the number one thing. And you have to grind it out every day and your preparation will pay off if you work hard. And there are times where you have to prove, and there's times where you need to improve. Those are the attitudes that I take into it. And I try to always think about the positions that I'm in. Uh, I'm not there to prove that I belong, I'm there to improve. And if mm -hmm. I have that attitude, usually I will do a really good job of prepping and covering the games. Mm -hmm. well, you are doing incredible things. We're so lucky to have you right here in the Charleston area. I'm proud area. of you, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and we'll, we will be looking out for all your coverage in yeah. the next few months. Thanks for helping us out for the fundraiser. And thanks for helping us out um, and doing a good job yourself because uh, we need all women working in the same direction to try mm -hmm. to help advance our, our careers. Certainly, Debbie, thank you so much. Thank you.